what was it? Two or three weeks ago or so now, we did a video here at Backyard Tech for a viewer after they asked what's what in my server cabinet. And it got a couple of views, a couple of likes, and a couple of comments. So I at least know there's two people out there that enjoy my videos. Now, I mentioned uh, both on, I think it was for Friday last week, as well as weekend Saturdays, I was going to try and get a follow-up video to the What's What in My Server Cabinet video out. However, due to the catastrophic failure here for weekend Saturdays at Backyard Tech, the follow-up video didn't get out. So this video is the video that was supposed to get out for weekend Saturdays, which is a follow-up video to the video from two or three weeks ago about what's what in my server cabinet. If you can make sense of that, you're smarter than me. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. Just before we get into this video, um, I reckon, I know offering up a comment or an opinion, someone's going to be highly offended with this, but eh, I'm at the stage now, I don't care. I reckon you could mount a legal case, okay, a really good strong legal case and argument, take it to court, defend it in front of a judge and win, and say that 2020 has just been one big case of Monday-itis for the entire year. I reckon you'd get away with that. And I reckon a judge would award you the case. What do you reckon? <laughs> All right, let's cut the garbage. Let's get into this one. Now, as a, this is a follow-up slash old mate's Q&A and advice, whatever you want to look at it at. Uh, a viewer by the name of Jake, I think it is, emailed me last week. Now, this is the guy I was telling you about either Friday or Saturday. And we were originally going to do this video on Saturday, but due to the catastrophic failure for weekend Saturdays here, the video never got out. So, Jake has said, uh, Hi, Backyard. Just got through watching your What's What and your server cabinet video. Great video, great to see people using old equipment to try and maintain something in their own home to suit their own needs. Also nice to see someone doing things their own way. I shouldn't have made that public. You're going to get all my viewers aggro. I have a question for you. Oh, can't freaking see. My glasses have just about had it, guys. Um... Is there a sequence to getting everything turned on in your cabinet after a power failure or a shutdown or you go away, or do you just turn everything all on at once and hope everything talks? Uh, no, Jake, the short answer is there is a sequence to turning everything back on. Um, I have tried the old, the old trick of turn everything back on all at once, um, and it didn't really work properly. We'll go out to the cabinet shortly and I'll show you how I get everything back up and running. Suffice to say though, suffice to say though, the only thing that really never gets turned off is the cabinet. The modem's on it. And I very the modem just stays on. Um, for the first time in about five years, the cabinet will not be shut down this Christmas because the other half's coming home um, for a few days between Christmas and New Year. And if I shut the cabinet down, there's no internet. All right. There's no modem, there's no firewall, and there's no server, which means there's no access point, which is just up there. Um, so normally everything gets shut down and then starting everything back up again, because all my servers boot at different speeds, uh, for example, QStore 113 comes up a lot quicker than Neth server. The AT350 is slower to start than the RX, the R730. Um, the R720 comes up before the firewall comes up. The firewall boot, uh, NAS server comes up faster than the firewall. And sometimes that whole thing all changes as well. So there is a sequence to getting all the servers back up and running. Um, basically, you go firewall server. All right. Then I bring up my block storage server. 
then I bring up my NAS server, and then I bring up both the ESXi hypervisors in really in no particular order. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab the video camera, which is fully charged. That's a rarity. We're going to go out of the cabinet. I'll shut everything down before we go out to the cabinet. And we will bring up the everything. And I'll show you the sequence I go through to get the everything started. Um, but this year, yeah, like I said, this year with the other half coming home between Christmas and New Year, I'm staying in Bendigo, but the other half's coming home. If I turn the everything off like I normally do, uh, she'll have no internet. And that would get me into a world of trouble because I'm not sure she'd know exactly how to turn everything back on properly, let alone access anything that's got to be reactivated. All right, let me grab the video camera. We'll head out to the cabinet and uh, I'll show you. Well, actually, before I do that, I'll shut everything down and show you how I bring everything up. All right, so there's two scenarios here. Um, both are applicable. In the event of a blackout, everything is set to stay off. All right, nothing comes up. Now, the modem's plugged into the RTU bricks, which is why the key switch is always on. All right, key switch never gets turned off. So in the event of a blackout, everything just stays off, all right? If I'm going away for an extended period of time, everything gets shut down, and then there is a sequence to bring everything back up, all right? Now, a lot of people will probably have a go at the way I start this. They usually do. So what I do first, let me get the keyboard out of the road a moment. Right, so the first thing that comes up is the firewall. All right, that's the first thing I start. All right. Now the reason I started like this is because this boots quicker than Net Server, but I bring it up in a specific sequence. All right. So we'll get OpenSense booted. does eventually boot and I do have it set to auto boot so I'm not having to sit there and do stuff I don't always bring the V490 up and I don't actually have any power for the V490 at the moment I'm using the leads for something else so basically we start the Firewall up. Don't want to show you my IP addresses, so we'll pull that away for a moment. Almost done. Alright. Now, as usual, it errors. And some people might fix it. I'm not going to bother. So let me log in. I won't show you the password. Let's see if I can do this without. Okay, so that's good. Alright, so once the firewall's booted, alright, which you should be able to see, or you're probably not, next thing to come up is Neth Server. And I go over to my KVM and I bring up Neth Server. Alright, you can see there, Neth Server. So this is the next server I bring up. Alright, now once Neth Server's up, there's a sequence to bringing up the rest of the servers. I hate the way it does that. <laughs> I really do hate the way it does that. So I'm booting the top one. That's my most, my latest uh, update for Net Server. I've, I've got more updates out there, but I'm not going to bother about them at the moment. So here comes Net Server.
a little slow to boot, but you might just be able to. You know, the camera's now focused. The only problem with this camera is it doesn't like focusing on black screens. I don't know if anyone else has the same problem. So Neth's server's now up. So now the next server I bring up is the big storage server, which I think I've locked. No, I haven't. Ow. So now what I do, I'll just put that down there, bring up the KVM, and we go to QStore 720. All right, now, the reason I do this is, this is the server that's got the main uh, iSCSI block storage on it for the main PC, all right? But I don't need to take that off to boot the 720. Dell key on there, I do. So here comes the 720. I don't have a front bezel for the R730. So I wait for that to get started. make sure it actually does start. It doesn't always start up properly. See, this is the thing. I don't mind if my own stuff never starts properly because I can usually figure out the problem pretty quickly. So we've got the server up. The 720 is coming up. comes up. He says it should. Oops. Oh, that's right. That's gonna do that little trick on me. Ooh. Probably the slowest part of the 720 is it getting life cycled up and running. So here comes firmware interfaces and life cycle. This is the slowest part. Once this starts to boot, because this server and this server are in a grid, I've also got to get this server up and running before I can get the NAS server up and running. All right, otherwise it doesn't work properly because this is the master control for the whole BYT storage system. All right, so this has got to come up before this comes up. So it does take a while for this to happen. Um, normally what I would do is we get the car unpacked and then I... Um, there's life cycle loading. So what normally happens is I'll, we get the car unpacked and then I end up coming out here for about 10, 15 minutes and boot everything back up. So once this one's loaded, I can then bring up this one and then I start the R730 and the AT350. Neither of which I worry about um, viewing their boot up sequence because I know they boot. So once this has started, the only problem I have, I've, I've probably got something mixed up in here because the 720 shouldn't take this long to boot. But I've probably got something mixed up. And if I have, I'm not really worried. I know everyone's going to be like, oh, you should try and figure out what the problem is and fix it. I'm not worried about it. You know, this is my own system here at home. It's nothing, nothing I need to worry about at the moment. 
So it does take about 10 or 15 minutes to bring, bring up the everything. Or longer. <laughs> Sometimes a lot longer actually. Ooh, sorry. And then it's just a case of once this is up, then bring this up. I don't have to worry about waiting for this to boot. All right. So there's OzNexus Q Store. Next thing to bring up is this one. So here comes, so this is the block server and the master node for the grid. Here comes the NAS server. So the block iSCSI and the NAS. I want to check its boot sequence, I can. One, two, three, four. Here comes this one. I might sort of escape the, that. So, here comes QStore 113. See it's coming up now. They're all my hard drives lit up. The OS drives over here because I do have another drive I want to put in here. And there are my two, my main two CPUs. And this will go off and boot now. NAS comes down to speed. Once it's booted, then I'll bring up the two hypervisors. I've noticed since updating my Oz Nexus that the screen doesn't show up anymore, but I'm not worried about it. It's no, it's not, I'm not really phased. Here come the drives. The drives are up, as you can see, and we're ready to go. So, next up, I want to bring up, yeah, that's what I thought. So, next up, I'll bring up the R730. Comes the R730, that can come up as need be. And then I bring up the oh, AT350. So up comes the AT350. Ah, done it again. That's interesting, it's not picking up the AT350. I hate it when it does this. There it goes. So here comes the AT350. And that's it. The AT350 will boot quicker than the Dell. Oops. The AT350 boots quicker than the Dell boots. Um, the Dell's obviously got a lot more to go through. So there's the Acer. If I go back to select PC, I think the Dell. Oh no, here comes the Dell. So there we go. Anyway, so that's how I bring everything up. Um, that's basically how I bring up everything. So the firewall, then net server, the 720, the NAS, um, and then my two hypervisors. And it doesn't matter which one comes up first because these are both statically assigned and they're not part of the FQDN. So they, um, they don't need anything like that. And people are gonna say, well, why do you bring this up 
before you bring this up. Well, as I said, this is the master node. This is the grid control of this one, all right? So, because I've only got access to this one to control both this and this, if this comes up, I can't get into this, all right? So, I need this up first, and then once it's up, we're all good to go, all right? So, it's OpenSense Net Server 720, 113, and then the two hypervisors brings my entire system back up and running, and then we're ready to go. So, there we are. That's how I bring everything up. Anyway, that's it. Have a good one.